Welcome back to Get Down to Business, the show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. I will say this, in the 10 years that I've been uh, hosting this show, I've only had um, folks come back onto the program just literally a handful of times, but uh, we're about to make history over here because I'm rejoined by Dr. Murray Sabrin, um, who is, we were just chatting offline, who has written uh, yet another book over here. It's called The Finance of Healthcare Wellness and Innovative Approaches to Employee Medical Insurance. just came out in October of last year, and it provides business decision makers with the information that they need to match the optimal healthcare plan with the culture of their workforce. Murray, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Shalom. It's great to be with you. Absolutely. So I have been reading a little bit of the uh, big picture data over here. Americans spend more on medical care as a percentage of GDP than any other nation, period, end of story. And for the decade of ending in 2020, insurance premiums rose 47% and deductibles re- uh, jumped nearly 69%. That is, that's pretty staggering indeed. Uh, Murray, how did you get uh, interested in this topic? And uh, tell us a little bit about your expertise in this area. Well, uh, when I was at Rampo College uh, back in the early 2000s, I hosted uh, uh, a day-long symposium on healthcare. And uh, at that time, Senator John Corzine was the uh, keynote speaker. And then we had a, a retired physician who was the founder of a nonprofit health center in uh, Red Bank, New Jersey, was the luncheon speaker. And we had a panel discussion about this topic. And it always seemed to me that healthcare has gone in a much different direction Then when I was growing up in the 1950s in New York City, when we didn't have Medicare, we didn't have Medicaid, we hardly had any insurance. My father had a major operation and uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield took care of it. And it was at a a, uh, large New York City hospital. But when we went to the doctor, it was basically you pay your uh, $5, $7 visit, you get a prescription if you needed one, filled it at the local pharmacy, no insurance forms, no co-pays, no deductibles. And the average working person could get uh, quality medical care without having to go through the hoops of uh, insurance companies or the uh, government through Medicare and Medicaid. And so that has that system has now changed dramatically, where now the plan, the insurance plan is is the foremost uh, uh, component of health care as opposed to the doctor patient relationship. Indeed, a lot has changed. So. Uh, you, you talk in, in the book, again, it's called The, the Finance of Healthcare Wellness and Innovative Approaches to Employee Medical Insurance. Um, with It's not just the history. It also talks about a uh, sort of a, 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 a concept, an idea uh, that, again, as we said, will provides business decision makers with information that they need to match their healthcare plan with the culture of their workforce. But uh, it's interesting. You talked about some of the, some of the experiences that you've had uh, growing up over here. Um, but what are some of the low cost, high quality um, medical care options that you're seeing now in this uh, in 2023 and beyond that our listeners should be paying attention to and that you address in your in your fantastic read? Well, one of the things that I came across, which I didn't realize was was around, but it was, it's essentially similar to what we had back in the 50s and 60s. It's called direct primary care, where an individual or family would contract with a doctor, pay a monthly fee, very low according to the research I've done, and you'd get access to the doctor virtually 24 seven. It's almost like concierge medicine. And and there would be no waiting in the waiting room. You'd make an appointment and the doctor would uh, see you virtually instantaneously when you went to the waiting room, as opposed to uh, the traditional policy where you may have to wait up to an hour to see the doctor, even though you may have appointment at two o'clock, you may not see the doctor till three o'clock. So that's one way that employees are Companies can contract with local uh, doctors to do that, or uh, or individuals can do that on their own if they don't have uh, uh, employer-based health insurance. So that's a low-cost way of getting quality care where the doctors will do blood results. They even may have prescription drugs available to them at low cost. And from the doctors I've spoken to, uh, it's very inexpensive and you get quality care because the doctor can spend more time with you in a direct primary <laughs> care practice than a regular traditional practice because you have to see more and more patients because of deductibles and reimbursement by the insurance companies. So again, uh, the the insurance companies, the employer, the government has interfered with the doctor-patient relationship, which is essentially a contractual relationship where you pay and get quality service. And so I would like to see that expanded across the country and uh, have insurance for the purpose that it's uh, necessary, that is to take care of the big ticket items where it would bankrupt the family. But even that can be reduced dramatically 
by having these surgery centers pop up all over the country. And the example I use in the book is the Surgery Center of Oklahoma, which charges a fraction of what the hospitals charge for major operations. So we have a, a model, if you will, of direct primary care and surgery centers that would really reduce the cost of health care from the $4 trillion we're spending today to probably half uh, and save $2 trillion. Absolutely. And I know, um, and if we have time, we'll talk a little bit about some of the wellness programs and, and some other options as well. But I, I mentioned the term culture, company culture, which sometimes dictates the most appropriate healthcare coverage. Murray, why, why are those two uh, uh, ideas interconnected and related? Well, the, as we know, every company has a culture, whether it's from top down or from bottoms up. Uh, people are used to doing a certain way of business in their organization. And so the, the key thing is for the uh, management and the employees, whether it's a small business or a medium sized business or even a large corporation, to really get together and say, listen, this is what people expect as an employee. They expect the employer to provide uh, health care insurance. I like to call it medical insurance because you're basically paying for medical bills and see what is the best way to do so that would provide quality care and reduce the premiums, which goes right to the bottom line for every dollar that the company can save in premiums. That goes right to the bottom line in profits, or they could do profit sharing with individuals, with the employees. And so it's a win-win for everyone. And there are organizations that are doing that through self-insured mechanisms where they have a third party administer the program. And uh, this way we can get those healthcare costs down because we are so over the top in healthcare costs in this country that it's really undermining our international competitiveness since uh, countries around the world spend a fraction of what we do here. And wellness programs have become an integral part of the, of the workplace because um, sadly, 40% of American adults are obese. Uh, uh, six out of 10 Americans have, a, have an, a chronic condition. Four out of 10 Americans uh, adults have two or more chronic conditions. These are very expensive to deal with. And so wellness becomes an integral part of getting the American people back to better health, which would reduce uh, medical costs dramatically. No question about it. Again, I'm chatting with seasoned author and finance expert, Dr. Murray Severin, who's an emeritus professor of finance at Rambo College of New Jersey. Uh, Dr. Sabin is considered a public intellectual for writing about the economy in scholarly and, public, and popular publications. Again, his new book, The Finance of Healthcare, Wellness and Innovative Approaches to Employee Medical Insurance, which came out in 2022. Uh, we've been chatting a little bit about uh, some of the uh, low cost, high quality medical care options. We talked about culture and just briefly touched a little bit on the, uh, on the wellness programs as well. So what is the key takeaway, Murray, that you're hoping um, readers of your book and listeners to our program walk away um, when they read the finance of healthcare? What are some of the action items that you're hoping to inspire them with? Well, I think one thing is information. The more information you have, the better decisions you can make. And that really means the HR people have to go out there and see what's available in the marketplace. We know uh, many companies are self-insuring, but the question is, with that self-insurance, are there ways that they can cut down on their costs as well to give the employees a better uh, uh, medical care, health care experience? And uh, I would say this is, this is a, a foundational issue that companies need to address because uh, Healthcare costs are just uh, going off the charts in terms of uh, what it costs. And uh, then government regulation comes in and that distorts the market even more. And so we need to go back to a free market, which I've been advocating for decades, which would uh, balance supply and demand and put the doctor patient uh, relationship at the forefront instead of what plan is, is it more appropriate for, for a uh, mm -hmm. company. Well, that's a strong message. Um, Murray, there's uh, a lot more that we can talk about and a lot more that people will see if they check out uh, the book and your website. How can people get in touch with you and pick up a copy of this fantastic read? Well, I, uh, I have a Substack column, murraysabrin.substack.com. And what I do there is try to come up with solutions that deal with a lot of these issues, whether it's uh, health care, social security, education, housing, transportation, monetary policy. And uh, I write there twice a week, and uh, hopefully I will have a podcast in the near future where I'll spend more time on some of these issues. Uh, the bo uh, my books are available on Amazon, uh, and uh, just Google my name, and all the books that I've written in the past few years will, will come up. 
<laughs> all the books and I'm sure many more in the future as well. Dr. Murray Sabrin, thank you so much for joining us, murraysabrin.com. Um, and again, uh, check out uh, the finance of healthcare, wellness and innovative approaches to employee medical insurance and all of the other books, as we were just saying, a link through our show notes as well. We've got to squeeze in a very quick break for some headlines, commercials. Um, and when we come back, we've got a lot more small business jobs and entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about women in business. Um, so there's a lot more in store. Don't touch that dial. You're listening to Get Down to Business. <laughs> 